Let's imagine you run a tourism company. You want to create a marketing campaign where every time your advert appears on a television, you broadcast a new wonderful landscape. However, your advert will appear hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of times, and you don't have that many different photos, or at least that many photos for which you have copyright to show on TV. So what can you do to ensure you keep generating new and fantastic sceneries for each advert? Fortunately, in 2014, Goodfellow and his supervisor Benjo, as well as a bunch of others, proposed the Generative Adversarial Network, GAN. The GAN is essentially a specific framework for creating a generative model, which we hope to use to gen generate infinitely many different landscape images and never worry about running out. So let's dive straight in and understand the architecture of the GAN framework. We will have a generator G. This can be any parametric differentiable function, such as a CNN, DNN, attention mechanism, or a mixture of these things. Basically, some deep architecture that can take an input and produce an output with some learnable parameters, which we can call theta g. What we ultimately want is that any noisy input, let's call this the variable z, sampled from some distribution, typically a multivariate normal distribution, input to our generator, outputs a matrix of values, which when interpreted as an image, looks like a new, beautiful landscape, never seen before. If we draw Z again from our distribution, it will give a different input to our generator, giving another new landscape as desired. We can draw Z as many times as we want and keep generating new landscape images, in theory. However, we haven't quite yet discussed how we train the generator to achieve this wonderful result. This is where we introduce something we will call the discriminator. The discriminator will be a discriminative model with parameters we should call theta d that takes in a landscape image as its input and outputs the probability the input image is a real landscape image as opposed to a fake landscape image created by the generator. So now, we simultaneously train the generator and discriminator, where we are training the generator to fool the discriminator, whilst we train the discriminator not to be fooled by the generator. Initially, the generator will produce garbage that looks nothing like a landscape image, and the discriminator will be able to easily distinguish between real and generated images. However, as we train for longer, the generator's parameters theta g will keep updating such that the generator begins to do better at fooling the discriminator. In this manner, we will eventually be generating more and more realistic landscape images. <clears throat> Let's now talk about this mathematically. So we start with a randomly generated vector z, which we input to our generator g, parameterized by theta g. To use a notation in the original paper, we can say that the output of the model gz belongs to a distribution pg, where pg is essentially the mapping of the distribution of z by the generator. Next, we will say that any real image x belongs to some real distribution of scenic images p data. Then, if we call the discriminator d with parameters theta d, and let the single scalar output or discriminator represent the probability of having a real image at the input, we can define the following expression to optimize the parameters theta g and theta d simultaneously. Okay, let's dissect this expression a bit. The first term in our expression is simply the output of the discriminator for real images x. We want on average for real images, i.e. the expectation with respect to x, to maximize this output 
when training our discriminator to be good at its job. Remember that this output from the discriminator is representing the probability of being a real image. This, however, only trains the discriminator to be good at giving real images high probabilities of being real. To really be a good discriminator, we also wanted to output a low probability for fake images. This is achieved by maximizing the second term, where g of z is the fake image. Again, we take an expectation over all fake images, so the discriminator performs well for any fake image. Since the fake image comes deterministically from z, we can take our expectation over z drawn from our defined pz distribution. So far, we know that we can optimize our parameters theta d to maximize this expression so that we get a well-trained discriminator. However, recall that to get a good generator, we want to train it such that the discriminator does its job badly and cannot distinguish between generated fake images and existing real images. Therefore, at the same time, we optimize the generated parameters theta g to minimize this same expression. As we optimize this expression in a min-max manner, we will eventually have a good generator that we can then use to generate as many realistic scenery images as we want. So, fundamentally, that is all there is to the GAN framework.